Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of stable diffusion and this time I'm looking at textual inversion in the automatic 1111 web UE. Now apparently this works best if you use those flags and doesn't work very well if you use those ones. Now I found that it needs at least 8 gig of VRAM on your GPU and you will of course need a fair amount of system RAM. You probably already have at least that if you are running it already. 5 plus images for training you'll also need those as well and a quick question why would you use this when dream booth is so much better quality and only takes about 10 minutes to train whereas textual inversion takes some hours well basically because it's easy it's built in it's just a tab on the thing there you don't have to install any extra software it's quite simple to use the files are quite small and you may just want a rough style so let's have a quick look at this it's got three basic steps you create the embedding you pre-process your images and then you click train. So let's have a look at this to start with. Create an embedding, step one. So this is basically the word that you're going to use in your prompt. So there I'm going to put my prompt word. That's fine. And initialization text, this basically describes your images and I'm using an owl keyring. And then you've got the number of vectors per token. That basically makes it brilliant, but you can't style it. And that makes it not exactly like your training data, but you can style it in any way you like. Personally, I find between two and eight is quite a good number to use there. So once you've selected all those, press create, and that will create the thing in there. So there it is, it's created it now. I've got a source directory to pre-process my images. You don't have to do this. If you've already got a perfect data set, then you can just use that. But there I've got, as you can see, some pictures of an owl keyring. So I'm gonna copy that, pop that into my directory there. And there is my output directory. I've already processed these, but basically I did that. And then you've got flip and add caption. Those are the two options you probably want to use. You probably don't want to use split in two because that means your data set will be a little bit rubbish. So what do, what do all these do? Well, basically it makes those images into 512 by 512 and renames them, augments them by flipping them. So as mentioned there, you just select a source, select a destination, optionally select flip and add caption, and then click process and that, that will make all these images so as you can see here it's flipped them and it is also added a load of file names in there for you as well the split option uh splits the site the thing images in two if, it, if they're too big so you know if you've got a file that's a weird aspect ratio and it's got a face and you split it in two probably not going to be very good and given that you're only using about five or ten images um yeah just just make it a nice square image so you don't have to use that split option and then we are ready for training so embedding that's the embedding that you created earlier so there i selected my prompt word learning rate now i tend to double this when i'm using a very low number of vectors but normally you just keep it on the default data set directory that will be the same as your destination directory there. So if you've already got a data set directory, you can just pop it straight in there without pre-processing the images. Log directory, you can just keep that as default. Prompt template, now there's four options here. You've got subject, file word, style, file words, or just subject uh, or, or style. Now the file word basically assumes that you have clicked the add caption option and all your files there have names so that's what file words it, it will use the words from that file if you are training a style then you can just leave it as the default if you're not training a style like i am you, i'm training a subject so you can change that style to be subject file words instead max steps is your next one 100,000, way too many Personally, I find around 15,000 to be absolutely fine. And anything above 30,000 doesn't seem to make very much difference. Then you are ready to go. You just press the train button then and go and make a cup of tea for some hours. Depending on the number of steps you have set, it will then go ahead and create that for you. I, of course, have created a load of them already. So let's have a look at this. Here it is in the textual inversion directory. I created one, two, four and 16 vectors per token. Let's have a look at all these images. So with 16 vectors per token, you can see that already it has created some rather strange looking ones, but it does look quite accurate by around 3,500. And those are some quite good looking images. I've gone all the way up to here, 8,500. It started to look a bit weird here. 
So you probably want to throw it in around 7,000 there. Gives you the embeddings there so you can copy in the previous ones. Now here it is again with four uh, vectors per token. As you can see, it's not quite as accurate, but it does slowly get a little bit more accurate over time. Over time, it gets a bit better and sort of by about 8,000, 9,000, it's, it's, it's still not quite close. It never quite gets as good as the 16 tokens, but it is a lot easier to style. Same with two tokens. So here it is with two tokens. Again, not very close to the actual one, but there, 3,000 actually looks quite good. 3,000 actually looks quite good. And we go up and up and up and there, 8,000, 9,000. And eventually it starts to look a little bit weird. And, and here it actually looks like a real owl, which is a little bit strange. And then with one token, so here's what it looks like with one token, actually starts off quite good. Now I did a slightly higher learning rate with the one token. This is where I used the 0.01 and uh, it, it seemed to do quite well with just one token. So there it is. It's not necessarily you know, a perfect representation of the training data, but it is very, very similar. So just to show you what those all look like, I'll show you this example with the 16, the four, the two and the one. So let's just pop that in there. So here is a photo of an owl key ring with one token. And that looks a little bit like that. So there we go. There is the owl with one token. And then the same thing again, but with two tokens, two vectors per token. There it is. And then I've got four vectors per token. So four vectors per token looks pretty close, doesn't it? That looks pretty similar. And then finally, the 16 vectors per token is the most accurate representation. So there it is, apparently. So that's that's pretty good. It's got the feet right and all sorts of stuff like that. So showing you the styles as well, just so we can pop this in here as well. So there we go. So this is a pencil sketch. And then we've got the one vector per token option. So there it is. And we've got the two. So there is the pencil sketch with two vectors per token. I think that one's pretty good. Then we've got the four vectors per token. And that, as you can see, that's looking a little bit less pencil sketchy. And then when we go to 16 vectors per token, uh, it hasn't actually styled it at all. And it looks a lot more like the original object. So there you can see the effect of increasing the number of vectors per token. And that, that's it. There you go. You've done it. You've, you've done some textual inversion and you've managed to put your own objects into stable diffusion. Uh, if you want to learn some more things, there's another couple of links that you can click on right after this.